couple things I uh, wanted to show you here as I'm working on the fuselage, this little bird, is that uh, one of the things I like working with foam is that you can just recess everything. Friction fit, there is no way that that, uh, that's my uh, control unit. There's no way that that's going to come out of there unless I want it to. I'm doing the same thing on the back here with my receiver. This is a receiver I picked up from Hobby King. I uh, picked it up with their radio. Very lightweight, very small, relatively reliable. You can see that I've measured it out. And I'm just going to cut and pick out this section with a knife. I've already cut it down and I'll be able to recess that receiver right down inside that plane the same way that I did my control unit. Now as I continue to do this I'll come back to it in just a second. There were a couple other things I wanted to show you before. Next time you see that it'll have that receiver recessed. I've already mounted my motor on the front. You see it's a Turnigy motor. Picked it up also from Hobby King. I, on the last video I showed you how to put the motor mount on the front of it. When I get done I'll recess my wires back inside. There'll be very little wiring showing. Um, I did a little bit of test balancing. I know that my battery needs to go approximately in this region. I'll show you how I actually balance it uh, after I've got the uh, or just prior to, to setting the wing inside. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the, the same thing with my servos. I'll recess my servos for my aileron and my rudder. Um, I'll recess the servo right into the wing for the ailerons. I'll recess the uh, servos in the uh, back here just for the rudder and the elevators. All of those when I get done uh, I'll paper cover the airplane. You'll see very little wiring. You'll see very little um, of the controls and yet they're easy to access in the event of an accident. I have to uh, replace anything. One of the things that I did on my motor that you need to be aware of is these backing plates. Put a little Loctite on them so that uh, the motor doesn't vibrate itself loose. Now with they, these things have very little vibration anyway. It's just one of those things that I like to do to make sure that everything is tight eventually. I use an outrunner on these as I indicated earlier. Um, we'll continue to work on that. Be back in a second. Okay, you see I've got that uh, recess now taken care of. I put a little recess section in it for the antenna lead so that it doesn't give me grief when I, when I get done with that. I can push that right on down in. I can pop it out with a screwdriver if I need. But my leads now will, will stick out a little bit, but the receiver is now protected from impact. Um, I can always run my wires, and you'll see when I get done with this, because my servos will be run off the side, I'll just run a little hole through it, and it'll be able to pull tight in so that the wires, even though they'll be sticking out slightly, they'll not be a huge problem. I could probably uh, do a little bit better on that and drop that down a little further. We'll see what happens on that in the future. All right, if you look at the plane that I've got now and the situation it's at, I've already gone ahead and embedded a number of my different things. All my servos are in. I've uh, not completely fastened them yet. I've, uh, they're friction fit. You can see that, but they're very, very tight. But I'm going to show you how to balance this thing. First of all, when I've got it, I want to keep it, you'll notice that my blocks are in the back to keep it from tilting side to side a whole lot. Then I've gone out in my shop and I've cut myself a fulcrum point that I can use as a balance point. I'm going to locate that right square underneath the center of my gravity on the plane itself, which is the highest point of the arch of my wing, on the cord of the wing. Now, I'm just a little bit probably still forward, but I've got that servo back there. It's in about the center of that servo, but this will give me a really good idea of where my uh, center of mass needs to be on this plane. And as I do this, I'm just going to start taking my battery and moving it forward, because that's what I'm going to use for my mass. Now you notice the weight starts pulling off that back about right there. 
It's about the center that I need to have. Now that's awful for, uh, for forward. And since I'm going to orient it in this fashion, that gives me a pretty good indicator of where I've got to put where I need to put that battery to use the battery as the piece that's used to center the mass. Now that looks like I've got to have that battery about as far forward as I can have it. Anything more forward of that and I end up too far forward. So right about there. About a half inch in back. Now that's going to create some problems with the underside of the plane because I've got my control unit. And I really want to have the battery slightly out if I can. I still want it friction fit, just like I've got everything else that's friction fit. But, if at all possible for cooling purposes, the engine's out front. If I put that sticking slightly out, it'll help me to cool that battery when I'm running it. Now this plane isn't going to be getting a huge amount of uh, aerobatics, etc. So it should run relatively cool anyway, but we're going to go ahead and try it. I may end up wanting to move my electronics back just a little bit here so as I widen out the gap I can put my battery a little bit more forward at the expense of moving my control unit back and then I'll put all my wires underneath that so that they're actually hidden. By the time you see this next time the plan will be I'll have all of these um, outfits I'll probably even have it put in the um, I'll have it paper covered as well. Now, before I get done here, I want to show you my electronics check. I've got everything now. I know where things have to be, but I want to do an electronics check, make sure that my radio works, everything else is set. I've wired my uh, electronic control um, unit right in. It's, uh, it's on channel 3. I've gone ahead. I'm using the uh, Hobby King radios, the HK T6AV2. I'm using this 18 amp uh, control unit for it that uh, it is a battery eliminating one uh, control VEC so we're good with that I've used the 9 gram Hextronics also from Hobby King um, servos they're all set all the way throughout it and in this one I'm using a Turner G 2.2 uh, milliamp hour battery so we're uh, good on that the 2200 now let's go ahead and, and uh, try things out and see if the way I've got them wired is properly wired. The big trick is the way I have it set up, I've got my throttle set on three. It's important to do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn on my transmitter. You can see the red light indicates that it's on. I've uh, had to solder on all my connections for my control unit. Now you'll hear the beeps uh, as it arms the um, radio. You see my throttle works. You can hear my um, rudder working. There's my elevator. There's my aileron. So it appears as though everything's working as it should. So I know I've got my plane wired right before I cover my plane. There again, I'm not going to cover the sections where I uh, have... Um, certain parts that I may need to pull out. Uh, I'll leave it open where the uh, receiver is at and open where the battery is at, but everything else is going to get a paper coating right up to the edges of the servos. And that's where we'll see it next time. And we'll get a chance to see how it flies.